Ravage comes with some tools that help make texture painting a more seamless operation. To see how these work, let's select all the objects and press Alt F3 to go into texture paint mode. In Blender, you can only have one object in texture paint mode, but with Ravage, you can press Alt and left click on an object to make it the active object. For the next setting, you need to have configured it in the add-on preferences or by pressing Shift, Alt and R and coming down to this section. You can set a primary blend mode and primary color as well as a secondary blend mode and secondary color. You can also choose to switch these colors when switching the blend modes. How this works is while in texture paint mode, if you look up here and I press A, it's gonna switch both the color and the blend mode so I can go from adding data to subtracting data. You can choose to put whatever two blend modes you'd like, pick your two favorite and have them here. You can also choose to not switch the colors when switching the blend modes. And if I now press A, it'll only switch the blend modes. Ravage comes with a polygon fill tool. How this works is it allows you to select areas of geometry and mask them out. If I create a new layer, make sure image by default is set to true and base color, then OK. I can then create an image for its layer and instead of black this time, we'll create a white image and click OK. I'll then make this the active image and press Ctrl tilde to go into the polygon fill modal. While in here, you'll notice a helper to the left. To generate a color, we can press spacebar. We can press A to add this color to our palette. Let's generate a few more. We can press S to remove a color from the palette. It notifies you when a color is not in the palette. So let's go to a color that's in the palette and press S. You can press D to cycle to the left and F to cycle to the right. To mask an area, I just need to highlight the geometry. I can choose instead of delimiting by where seams are to just fill a face. To do that, I can press W. That's it for the polygon fill tool. Let's move on to the next. In previous videos, we've touched up on how to use alphas and textures on the brush, but not really got into them. In this video, we'll get more in depth and use them to add textural detail to our object. As mentioned in previous videos, you can access the texture panel while in texture paint mode here. But my preference is to use a shortcut, Shift, Alt, and W. I can choose which context I'd like. For the first example, I'll add an alpha to the brush. While the brush has an alpha, I can press Alt A to get this context menu. I can toggle between a stencil and a decal brush. I can choose to use the decal brush in an anchored mode. To see how this works, we'll create another new layer, create a new image. We can have it as black this time, click OK. We'll make this the active image and then click and drag. You'll notice that we can easily get detail on the object without thought of it tiling. You can access the same context menu for the brush texture by pressing Alt S while you have a texture on the brush. I'll show you how to use a decal setup for space in this example. Unlike the anchored, if I click and drag, it'll make a continuous stroke. This behavior happens both for the brush alpha and the brush texture. Now that we're more familiar with how to use the texture paint tools that come with Ravage, 
we'll spend the rest of this video adding textual detail and decals to the object. The rest of this video is going to be a time lapse where I add this detail and I recommend you do the same on your end.